hello my friends welcome back to the innovation lab so in this video we're going to look at this uh, DC to DC boost converter that I just got in um, not too long ago so this is the uh, same boost converter uh, that I used in my previous videos but this one is the 1800 watts version of the boost converter so we're going to take a look at it to see what it can do see what the ratings are and kind of also in comparison with the one that i used before so this is the 1200 watts version of this same boost converter as you can see here so the noticeable differences if you're if you're wondering is that um, first of all uh, the heat sink if you look at it closely so this heat sink is about measured it from this side is about 22 millimeters in height then if you compare it with the 1200 watt version so this is kind of smaller it's about 14 millimeters in height so means that this guy will provide more cooling than this guy will. Well, no surprises because this is 1800 watts. Also, um, another thing you can see very easily is that in comparing these two converters, this guy, as you can see, has a cooling fan um, and the function is also built into it. Meanwhile, this guy doesn't. So, and there's a few other functions that I've noticed. Um, this guy here comes with this covered uh, terminal log or terminal block um, for input and for the output so you can kind of open it make the connections and close it back one thing I didn't like about the 1200 watt version is that for the input so you have instead of two you have four terminal logs I guess it's designed this way to handle more current but then it makes it weird to kind of make the connections. It's kind of hard. So, but on this guy here, it's very quiet, very easy. You snap it open. Yeah, the terminal uh, block there has, you know, very, uh, it's kind of bigger. So it will make it easier to put in a, um, a terminal log that is sizable without much difficulty. So another thing you can notice here is the fuse. So I think they have um, three fuses here. I'm not quite sure what the fuses are rated for because I can't see it. Maybe somewhere between 20 to 40 amps um, or maybe collectively because this unit is rated for 30 amps. I think it is rated for somewhere between 30 to 35 to 40 amps um, inputs current. Meanwhile the uh, 1200 watt version is rated for um, 20 amps so that's kind of a, another difference there so another thing you can easily see if you're wondering what the difference is is you can see here we have two stacked toroidal um, ferrite core there that was used for the inductor um, so you can see only one is used here I mean it doesn't surprise anybody because this one this guy is supposed to uh, um, conduct um, has a higher current rating so yeah this is so um, so about the electrical specs so we're gonna go on Amazon and review it so but you know what I have seen is that this guy can take an input voltage range of about 60 sorry 10 to 60 volts and um, output range of 12 to 90 volts so which is very uh, impressive so um, so as I mentioned it has a cooling fans and because of the cooling fans so this guy came with some uh, standoffs I believe so that way when you place it somewhere if you're going to mount it somewhere you know um, this way vertically this way um, the cooling the standoffs will help the cooling fan to get some air going in through the bottom of the unit so which is i think it's quite impressive as well and um, so lastly what could be most important to a lot of people uh, i know it's important to me as well is the price so this guy uh, 
came in at, uh, came in at um, $28. You can find other prices on Amazon, but I went for the cheapest, which is kind of the same exact thing. So the price at $28, uh, I think that's quite impressive for this unit that is rated for 1800 watts. So um, I'm, I'm gonna test it to uh, to kind of uh, see if it lives up to that standard. One thing you have to know, keep in mind, if you are going by that rating, is it, it can be a little bit tricky. So that rating, um, it's kind of, uh, you kind of, it has like a kind of a multiplier effect, kind of power compensation, IV compensation effect, because it's uh, the unit is rated for maximum input current of about 35 to 40 amps, if I remember cor correctly. So, which means the power that you can send through this guy depends on how much voltage you're putting into it. So, if your voltage source, if you're using a, like a uh, 12 volt battery, for example, like this guy, this is a 12 volt battery. If that's what you're using to uh, kind of boost the battery to higher voltage, which means the maximum inputs, and this doesn't even account for the efficiency losses. So the maximum input power or, you know, that you can send to this unit will be 12 multiplied by 30 or 35. So which if you do the math, will run you to about uh, less than 400 watts. So that, you know, I think people have to be mindful of that. So if you put in 24 volts, I think you get about uh, about 720 or so watts through this guy. So uh, where you begin to max out for the rated um, power of this guy is when you begin to approach the range of about 48 to 60 um, volts input. Right, this is the fully assembled uh, unit. Uh, I didn't really do much to it, I just installed the standoffs. Um, for some reason, I think they gave me the wrong standoff uh, for this uh, side here and uh, it kind of came short, but it's okay. Um, I think this trick should be able to uh, hold it off so that the fan can get some good circulation here. Yeah, so, all right. So let's go do some Amazon review, look at the specs and uh, do some testing on this guy. All right, so what you're looking at here is the boost converter on Amazon and um, it shows that it's rated for um, 1500 watts 30 amps and it can take an input voltage range of 10 to 60 volts and an output voltage range of uh, 12 to 90 volts and it can do constant current and constant voltage and also comes with a cooling fan. So now let's look at some of the specs down here and this uh, functional diagram here shows you know kind of some of the things we've already talked ab about. So that's the uh, UVP and uh, this is the current constant current adjustment and this is the constant voltage adjustment. So, um, so if you go down here it shows you um, all the specs, what is rated for, some of the things we've already talked about is rated for 1800 watts, but realistically, um, I don't think you should stress it up to that point. Input voltage rating of uh, 10 to 60 volts, output voltage range of uh, adjustable, output voltage range of 13 to 97 volts, and it has a maximum input current rating of 40 amps. So I think the nominal um, is about is the 30 amps that they, they called out called out in the description of the part. So then it lists out all the uh, uh, efficiencies here. We have the uh, 98.1 at 48 volt to 60 volts 8 ampere input. Then you have the same for 48 volt to 72 volts 8 ampere input. And then it drops a little bit, which I still think it's impressive at 48 volt to 84 volts, uh, 8 amps. So, um, so then it calls out some other specs that um, unless you're really, really into some very intricate designs, if you're using this just as a regular power supply or charging batteries, then you may not need to kind of dive deep into like the output ripple measurement and all of that. So I think um, um, 
These are important to know if you understand them. Uh, I do understand them, but I don't know how much of the audience will understand some of these, but uh, yeah. So I'll put operating frequency range uh, is about 110 kilohertz. So that is switching frequency for the, uh, that is driving the boost converter. So yeah, so this is quite impressive. And to be able to have all these functions and still be able to do this, have a product of 828 volts, I think it's quite impressive. So now let's go test it out and see what we can get. So what you're looking at here is the, shows the battery level are going into the uh, converter. So we are, I've just adjusted it to, to the lowest value, to the lowest point on the uh, um, adjustment potentiometer there, output voltage adjustment. And so now let's dial it up and see how high we can go. So we are at 34 volts, 43 volts, 52, 60, 84 volts, and there you have it. So we are at 96 point, it's jumping around a little bit, but I believe that will be, we can call it 96.2 volts. Now we're gonna bring it back down to about 28 volts, 27 volts. And my plan is to use, hook up a, a uh, an inverter to this and use it to drive a load because I don't really have um, any other low voltage loads that can go that high. All right, now let's do some testing to verify some of the uh, calculation that I was running earlier. So it looks like from the specs that um, you to get the act the actual rated power output from this DC to DC boost converter, you have to try to come in at the higher voltage. So this test, I'm using 12 volts to go into the boost converter. Then I'm, gonna, I'm stepping it up to 25 volts to come to the, to the uh, um, inverter. All right, so in this test, we're going to verify the behavior of this uh, DC to DC boost converter when we are powering it using a 12 volt source. So going from here, we have our 12 volt battery uh, pack going into the boost converter. Then we tune up the boost, com boost converter to 25 volts and uh, then use it to drive this uh, 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 inverter. So, and what we're gonna be using at less loads will be this hal these halogen bulbs that I've used in the past videos. So this bulb here can uh, believe this is rated for 200 watts and this is rated for 300 watts. So from my calculation, so with a 12 volt input, this boost converter should be able to, I think it's with the 12 volt input and the uh, maximum input current of the 30 amps. So if you do the math, I think it, it comes up to like 360 watts that you can handle. So what that means is with a load of 200 watts, this converter should be able to drive it. So with a load of 300 watts, we may struggle a little bit. All right, so let's give it a try. So turn it on. So as you can see, we're driving the 200 watt load, no, no issues at all. Now let's see what happens when we change this to 300 watt load. So it is also driving the 300 watt load, no issues. Now I think we may have to increase it a little bit to see what happens. So now we have increased the, the, the load from 300 watts to 500 watts by adding these two halogen bulbs. This is 200 watt bulb and that's a 300 watt bulb all plugged into this uh, power inverter and our input source is still 12 volts, so let's see what happens. As you see it, it's kind of oscillating on and off, on and off. So that tells us that the boost converter is not able to drive that amount of load, which means that the calculation of 360 watts maximum was correct at 12 volts. So now let's increase the battery voltage to 24 volts 
uh, coming into the boost converter and let's see if it's going to be able to drive this 500 watt load. So what we have here now is we have the two batteries hooked up as we talked about. So let's see what's going to happen, how much, what kind of a response we get. And there you have it. So we're able to drive the 500 watt load, no issues. The inverter is not tripping off. The, the boost converter is driving it, no issues. So this goes to uh, this goes to verify the calculation again that um, the input voltage level kind of drives the, the power output of this unit. So the 1500 watt or 1800 watts is the maximum rating, um, which which um, you cannot simply just get by using 12 volts or a lower voltage input. As you can see, the boost converter is also driving the 600 watt load with the 24 volt input um, voltage going into it. All right, my friends, we've come to the end of this test video. I hope you had some fun. And uh, if you did, um, Please uh, don't forget to uh, su subscribe to our channel. I will be doing some more um, design, uh, trying the different concepts with this power supply. And um, I'll be using two of the several power supplies to make 24 volts. All right, see you in the next video.